All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, today you join me as I go to pick up a cheap van that I bought for just £1,500. It arrived with us yesterday in parts exchange. Now, I haven't actually seen it yet, but I'm told it's a Vauxhall Vivaro, which is the same as a Renault Traffic, which is also the same as a Nissan Prima Star. Why do I know all this stuff? Sad. Anyway, it's been a while since I've had one of these, and it's been described to me as needing a bit of TLC. I'm told the previous owner was a dog groomer or a dog walker or something like that. So I'm expecting this to be a stinking hairy mess. It's done 160 odd thousand miles and there are a few warning lights on. So I figured if I've got to experience this unpleasantness, why don't I share it with you guys? That way it'll be fun, if nothing else. In this job, it isn't all big profits and fast cars. Trust me, most of it is with stuff like this. I've had quite a few of these vans over the years. My dad had a Renault Traffic in Spain about a decade or so ago. And I used to drive that up and down the coast from Malaga to Estepona all the time. But it wasn't what you'd call reliable. In fact, far from it. The clutch went, the turbo went, the gear linkages went. There was something else as well. I can't think what it was, but it was major and it was quite expensive. So it wasn't what you'd call a reliable van. Poor gear linkages on these are a real common issue. When they start to go, changing gear is a bit like stirring soup. It's only six from 10. Anyway, let's go and have a look, shall we? See how bad it is. Well, all I can say is, wow. Wow, wow, wow. I've never seen purple wheel trims before. Or a purple grill. Look at that. What a beaut. Although, on the bright side, look at that roof rack. That's going to be worth 500 quid alone. Oh, it's a crew cab. So it's got what looks like six seats. But only one door. That's strange, isn't it? I thought it would have had two sliders. It's got a hashtag we do it for the dog sticker. I can smell this van already. Right, let's do a vehicle history check then. As always, I'm going to go to carvertical.com, type in the vehicle reg, which is Mike Kilo 63 Yankee Kilo Echo. It's really important that you do one of these checks before you buy a vehicle. This checks for things like mileage rollbacks, accident damage, finance outstanding, all that sort of stuff. It's really important that you do one of these before you hand over any of your hard-earned cash. If you click the link below, then you'll get 10% off each and every vehicle check that you do. All you need to do is click that link and use the promo code HIGHPEAK. It doesn't cost much, it only takes a couple of minutes, and Car Vertical checks database in dozens of countries, as it's doing right now. Right, and the report's done. It's actually calling it an Opal Vivaro here, which I guess technically it is. Under that Vauxhall badge on the grille is the Harry Potter style lightning logo of Opal. I don't know what else you call it. I don't think it's ever been likened to Harry Potter before, but it's the first time for everything. Right, so no mileage fraud was disclosed. It's never been stolen, never been involved in any accidents, and there's no outstanding finance on it. Ah, this is interesting. So it is a January, February 2014 on a 63 reg. Let's see if there's any MOT on it. Oh, there's quite a lot of advices there. So it was MOT'd in March this year, and it passed, but it had four advisory items. Near side front tyre, offside rear tyre, okay. Near side rear tyre as well. And also the offside front direction indicator slightly discoloured. That's a bit of a fussy MOT tester, isn't it? Ah, this gets more interesting. So it was used as a police vehicle. Makes sense actually to ferry officers around here. The last MOT was done at 157,000 miles. I know it's done 160, so that's right. But apart from that, there's nothing else to report. So that's all good. So, let's walk around it. Just hope this rain holds off. Okay, well, I think the rain has stopped. At least for a second, anyway. Look at those wheel trims. Very snazzy. They're coming off. A little bit of rust there, a bit of scabbiness on the arches. Oh, that's nice. I like to see that. Just give me goosebumps, actually. Well, it's quite tidy, I suppose, for a van. They're always battered vans, aren't they? There's a little mark there, a little dent there. Some Tipex there, by the looks of it. Yeah, not too bad, though, is it? On the back, we've got a Goodyear that looks quite old. And there's about three mil of tread remaining there, so not great. Got a Delinte here with about five mil of tread, so that's good. Holes in the bumper there where they've had some sort of lights or sirens or something. Look at this, look. Isn't that the most hideous thing you've ever seen? That will actually, oh, it's, it's a wrap. Okay, a little bit of work there, but that'll, that'll come off. That's fine. 
take off the number plate surrounds as well because they are hideous. Another matching hole there in the bumper. And we've got a Mitchell in here. We've got four odd tyres here, ladies and gents, I think. A little crease there in the arch there. Oh, and we're missing the trim down this side. So it should have the black plastic trim there, but it does not. These tyres look very old, actually. Let's see if we can see a date stamp. Uh, actually can't, because it looks that old. About the front one. 15th week of 19, okay. It's not that old then, is it? Yeah, look at that roof rack. Proper bit of kit, isn't it? I'm quite impressed with that. Let's climb up on this wall here without breaking my neck. I just know that that's worth a few hundred pounds. These often get broken because of the sheer size of them, but that's all right, as is that one. Oh, what have we got here? A tribute to Paul Walker. Well, that tells us one of two things. The previous owner of this van was either 11 years old or they had a terrible taste in films because the Fast and the Furious, as we know, are rubbish. We've only got one key, but it works. Let's have a look in the back. Well, it's ply lined. Oh, there's the trim. That's the result, isn't it? Just wants sticking back. That saved me some money. We've got a vent there. I don't think this was used as a police van to carry prisoners around in. don't think this area has seen any perps. Some hooks there, a few coats. Doesn't smell doggy. Let's get, get Sky home. We do it for the dogs, okay. Honour an animal's lost in service. It's hmm. nice. We've got some nice carpet now. Might be in my nan's living room, this. Some very dirty seats, and they're quite, quite hairy as well. That's ply line too. Well, this is strange, this. I don't quite understand what's going on. Has somebody fitted these seats? I don't think this is an actual crew cab because there's only one seat belt. So I think somebody's just made a normal van into a crew cab. That's what I think, but I'm not a van expert. This doesn't look like it left the factory like that, does it? Unless, of course, the factory's in the UK, in which case that's entirely plausible. Here comes the rain then, so that's perfect timing. Let's get in this thing. Oh, I wish I hadn't actually, it stinks. So, more bling inside, look at this. They've wrapped this, got a little crown here, or tiara, whatever you call it. Look at all these bits on the vents. I only wish that I had enough spare time to do things like this. There we go, instantly added value to this, haven't we? Well, what have we got then? So we've got air conditioning, electric windows, a hook there, a few poppy dumps. Hazard light button's broken, and we've got holes in the dash here. So, it's been smoked in. And we've got a disgusting looking wheel cover there. I hate these steering wheel covers. They just, I know it's probably hiding a minging steering wheel underneath, which, mm, yes, it is. But I just think this will be harboring so many germs and diseases. Get this off actually. This can go in the bin immediately. I would put the steering wheel covers in room 101. There we go. Now, have we got any service history? Uh, Toe and eye thing there. Not in its usual place, so that's never a good sign, is it? That means it's been out. Squeaky seat. But it's all very familiar, this. Oh, let's check the gear linkage. 162065. Capital. And yes, it is lit up like a discotheque. Injection fault. What else have we got? The spanner light, fuel light, stop, and seat belt. 
Okay, well we can fix one of those, can't we, by putting a belt on. That's one of the lights extinguished. I can do the other one by putting a drop of diesel in it. So then we've got the stop light on and the spanner light. Now the spanner light will just be a service. But the injection fault, that actually on Renaults and things could be anything. Doesn't necessarily mean there's a fault with the injectors. Do the windows work? Because it is French. <laughs> no, that one does not. What about the passenger side? Ah. Well, to paraphrase the late meatloaf, one out of two ain't bad. Right, one's broken there. Do the mirrors work? No, that doesn't work either. Right, so it's either this switch pack that's dead or there's some sort of wiring issue to this door. Although that doesn't make sense, does it? Forget that. Forget that doesn't make sense at all. That one works. That's funny, isn't it? Yeah, I would say then this master pack, this master switch pack is broken. Down here we've got some spare oil, which I never like to see. And what looks like a locking wheel nut, but this van shouldn't have lockers, surely. Central locking, does that work? Sounds like it. Sounds loud as well. This is another common issue actually. Now the fan, I think this happened on my dad's, it only worked on four, which was handy in Spain. In the summer anyway, with the air conditioning on. Two, three. Oh, that's just blown a load of dog hairs in my face. Four. Right. Well, I am surprised. Have they left me a CD in? Oh, they have. What have we here? What delight is this? I can see Psycho. Who are Calabro? Never heard of him. Let's see who they are, shall we? Well, it's ticking over nicely, isn't it? It's not lumpy or rough. Well, I'm none the wiser. I apologise for that. Calabro, if you're watching, didn't mean any offence. Should we take this for a drive then and see what it's like? See how sloppy the gear linkage is. And we're away. The steering wheel is disgusting. Sort of falling to pieces. My wipers work, although they could do with some new blades. A little bit loose there on the front end. Oh, we've got a crack in the windscreen. Terrific. We're about to change gear then. How's my linkage? It's actually all right. Drives in a straight line, I suppose. Have I got some brakes? Yeah, brakes work. I really like driving a van. Why is that? Am I on my own? Let me know in the comments below. Just for some reason get a real kick out of driving a white van. Well, the gear linkage is fine, so I'm guessing at 163,000 miles, that must have been replaced. A little bit bouncy, but most vans are, aren't they? I think then what I'm going to do is run this to my mechanics, get them to do an oil change on it, get them to clear these lights and see what they are, see if they stay out. What else? Replace the wiper blades. I think it's going to need four tyres because they're all odd and they're all a bit borderline. So I think I'll probably do that. And then I think there's some profit in this. There won't be any huge earns, but there's always somebody looking for a van. A bit like cheap cars, there's just always somebody in the market for this kind of thing. It's a little bit vague and wayward. I know it's a van, I'm not expecting a Lotus Elise, but I think that could be the poor tyres. But it pulls well, so I don't think there's an issue with the turbo or the EGR. I don't know what that injection fault thing's all about. We'll soon find out, won't we? I need to see if there's any service history. Because this came in past exchange, there might be some with the V5. I think for 1,500 pounds, this would do somebody. The thing with vans, they're a tool, aren't they, to do a job? So somebody could use this on day one, really, and start making a living. Whether that's cleaning somebody's windows or doing somebody's extension, that kind of thing. I mean, somebody's made this into a six-seater, so the back space is only half as big as it should be. But it would do for somebody, I'm sure. You could soon rip those seats back out again. You could even take up the purple carpet. So we've got purple wheel trims, a purple grille, purple carpet, purple steering wheel, purple air vents, a purple stereo surround. It's like being inside Barney the Dinosaur. Considering my dash is lit up like a Christmas tree. Drives all right, this. 
quite enjoying it in a funny sort of way. So I think that's what I'll do. Run it straight to my mechanics now and I'll catch up with you in a day or two. Cheers guys. This hasn't been as unpleasant as I thought. It smells a bit of dogs, but it's not overwhelming. I've been in far worse. In fact, I've been in far worse this week. If I were to spend three or 400 pounds on this, I think this is a 3,000 pound van or more all day long. There's no vat on it either, which is another good selling point when selling a commercial vehicle. Right, see you in a little bit. Well, we've got some good news and some bad news. Which one do you want first? We'll go with the good news. I've sold this van for profit, which is very good news. You might be wondering what the bad news is. Well, the bad news is it wasn't as much profit as I'd hoped. I ran it down to my mechanics and asked them to scan it and see why the dash is lit up like a Christmas tree. And I also asked them to check it over to see what work it might need before I could sell it with confidence. They did that, they checked it all over for me. And the answer was quite a lot of work. In fact, almost a full A4 page of work required. It's a bit of a shame really, because it does drive really well for a high mileage van. And to top it off, the previous owner dropped in some more service history. The service history that she dropped off was from Greater Manchester Police, and it's been serviced right the way up to 140,000 miles. After all, this was a liveried police van, so although it might have been driven hard, it has been serviced well. I paid £1,500 for it, and I've sold it to a mate of mine for £1,700, so it leaves me a profit of £200. It's not brilliant, I'm certainly not going to be able to retire off it, but it is a step in the right direction. It could have been a lot worse. What I'm going to do now is park up somewhere and talk you through all the faults that this van's got. You might want to clear your diary. In no particular order then, I left it down at my mechanics for an oil service, an MOT, and some warning lights on the dash, and a faulty master switch here for the windows. I thought this van had a little bit of life left in it, so that should have been fairly straightforward stuff. But when they scanned it, it was coming up with faults with the turbo and faults with the DPF. Now, I don't believe that to be the case because it pulls really well. It doesn't smoke. It's not in limp mode. So I don't think that that's right, but that's what the code suggested. But on something like this, I didn't want to get involved in putting a new turbo on it or a new DPF. It just wouldn't have made sense financially. In addition to that, my mechanic told me that the wipers need replacing. The centre stoplight doesn't work. The screen's cracked, which I knew already. The two rear seat belts are missing. Now, as I thought, this came out of the factory as a three-seater not a six. Somebody's fitted that other set of seats and only one of them has a seatbelt on it so it wouldn't have passed another MOT. So you'd have to really rip those seats out and then get it MOT'd and then perhaps put them back if that's important to you. It also needs four tyres. Now this would have had to have van tyres on it which are a bit more expensive. There's also an oil leak and both front strut top mounts are stiff and a little noisy when turning. So all of that stuff, it's difficult to put a price on. You'd be talking £250 for tyres, £250 for a screen, £50 for a stop lamp, £25 for wipers, oil leak struts. Without sorting out any of the warning lights, you'd be into six or £700 and it just isn't worth the hassle. For me, anyway. If I had the time to work on this myself and try and source the parts second hand, then probably there's a bit of profit in it. But for me, when I'm flying here, there and everywhere, it just isn't worth the effort. I thought the best thing to do would be to take the profit, as small as it is, and run. This is the service history that got dropped off. So it is from Greater Manchester Police and it is a liveried Vauxhall Vivaro. And according to this print off, it's been serviced every six months. Every 10 or 12,000 miles, it's had a service. It tells you exactly what's been done as well. A service, B service, C service. So that's quite good. We know then that even if it hasn't had a service since the police last did it, 139,000 miles, then it's only done 20,000 miles since, which isn't the end of the world. I've only spent £12 having a mini valet done, so I've managed to retain most of my £200 profit. Oh well, onwards and upwards. Right, well thank you once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'll leave the link below. And yeah, cheers guys. See you next time. Hopefully there's some profit in the next one. See you then.